set up. Um, if you have problems, we'll get to that afterwards. Um, you have, should have already finished the quiz. Um, you might have some time later in the lab to finish that up if you haven't. So we're going to start with lecture, and then after lecture, we're going to do a lab. Yeah. All right. So, what is HTML? So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, there are a few key terms in uh, the word or the phrase HTML. Hypertext. Hypertext is simply just some kind of text document that has references to other sorts of documents, like JPEGs or document or docs or .html or whatever like that. So that's simply what a hypertext is. And markup language is a sort of syntax to annotate text. Um, so if you've heard of things like latex, which is really used a lot in the sciences, when you want to like make things like have superscripts in the fonts or subscripts in the fonts, you have to like put stuff in like certain markups to let it know that those types of characters in your in your text file need to be a superscript or a subscript. So that's essentially what HTML does. We have a ton of this plain text, and we want to be able to mark it up so that we know what types of what type of text this is, like whether it's a table, whether it's some sort of header, or it's a part of some uh, other HTML element. So they're really just essentially text files with just a few extra information to tell uh, more about what the specific text pieces are about. Um, it's standardized by the World Wide Web Consortium, WW3C, and uh, it's just this um, sort of collaborative uh, organization that works together to make in standard to make sure that all browsers uh, are compliant to certain standards so that, you know, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all are able to render the pages in the same way um, as the rest of the browsers. So what can HTML do for us? What HTML does is it gives structure to regular text. So if you have a regular text block that looks like this, you, have, you don't have any structure information to this. It's just a huge block. So what HTML can do for us is by adding certain tags to specific areas and enclosing them, uh, enclosing the text with those tags, we can create something that has a richer content. So we have things like a header here, um, a header here, and these, these certain paragraphs that are separated from each other, so that we can uh, make the appearance richer. So I told you that HTML formats text, but when you go to Typical websites these days, you see a ton of things other than just text, right? You see these images, you see videos here, um, you have this flash player, you have these weird triangle things that don't at all represent text. So HTML does a little bit more than just output text. Um, so here's the slide about tags. Um, in HTML, in order to annotate certain pieces of text, you have to wrap them around in what we call HTML tags. And tags are really just a simple construct, and they usually uh, are formed by having the, the type of tag in the middle. Um, in this case, we have an image tag. Sometimes there's like a header tag, um, a table tag, and uh, anchor, anchor, or anchor tag, and it's enclosed by an opening and closing brace. So, Um, so I have a bonus question, and you can get a candy for it. <laughs> if you can tell me uh, how, like I told you that in order, the way the browser works to look at these tags is it sort of checks out these these uh, these less than and greater signs and takes a look at the element inside of it, and then determines that's an HTML element, right? So the question is, what if you wanted to actually have like a greater than or less than, or actually put like this, this, this um, sequence of characters as part of the text, instead of having it rendered as an HTML element, how would you do that um, in your browser? Yeah. Don't those symbols have like a, its own special code, like three or four letters? It's like an and sign, and something like so. LT. How would you? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, 
So there, in HTML, there are a certain number of escape sequences. And in this case, if you wanted to, like, for example, have uh, less than IMG greater than as part of your text and not part of the HTML, what you would actually be doing in your text is instead of putting a, a less than, you would be putting an and LT and an and GT uh, instead. All right, so um, more on HTML elements. So not only do we have the, the starting tag here, uh, what we have is a number of other things. So apart from the starting tag, which is especially this um, less than, span, and greater than, we have something called an attribute that goes with an HTML element. And um, we'll talk more about attributes in the next class, but I'm gonna touch on it a little bit here. So one of the attributes an HTML tag can have is something called a class. And it takes in um, just some sort of string that specifies a value. Um, like I said, again, we're, we're gonna cover this later more specifically in uh, the next uh, lecture on CSS. Um, the next thing we have is the contents within the two tags. And right here is the closing tag. This indicates that everything within this is inside a span uh, HTML element. So the difference between an opening and a closing tag is basically this backslash right here after the less than sign. Okay. Um, a typical HTML document structure. So it's basically gonna look like this. You don't have to really kill yourself or wrap your head around everything here. Most of the times you're just gonna be trying to copy this, but it is, it is nice to know exactly what everything means. And uh, I'm gonna go through that in the next couple of slides. So um, just a brief overview, you have a document type, um, you have a namespace, and you have this head, header section, which is wrapped in between these guys and it creates some metadata. What this metadata does um, is it tells you more about the document. Uh, the title is the title of the, doc, of the HTML page, and you have your body here, which is uh, where you would be putting most of the HTML that you're going to be uh, writing up. So doc type. So I went, briefly went over doc type in the last slide, and what it basically is is just uh, telling the browser by which standards it conforms to. So I told you earlier about um, the W3C, which is that uh, consortium of people who come together to make sure that HTML is standardized in a certain way. So they're not perfect, so they have a lot of different iterations of how the HTML should have been standardized. And we, right here, there are basically um, three different types of uh, standardizations. We have some called XHTML1 strict, traditional and frame set. And um, essentially, they specify different rules. And I think, never mind. <laughs> so uh, strict, strict is a sort of HTML standard that um, will not allow the old HTML elements, which have been so-called deprecated or removed from the current technologies. Um, transitional uh, is something that um, will allow you to use old HTML, but it's it's not necessarily good because they've been removed for a reason, and the reason is because they found reasons why it's inefficient or it's just bad um, practice to do so. And um, yeah, important thing, it's not an actual HTML element per se. All right, HTML elements. So. Um, this is essentially one of the things earlier really I was talking about, how it sets up the namespace. Um, you don't have to worry too much about it, just make sure you have it in the documents. Uh, later on, you can go to these slides and copy the format of the documents to make sure that the documents that you create um, comply to the standards. Um, so we're going to be going over a lot of different HTML tags today. Um, this is just a basic list of them. Oh, questions. Oh, yeah. so that other element that's required, is that just for the browser to know at which like, standards your web page is following? Or doc type? Oh. Doc type? Yeah, and then also yeah. the slide afterwards. Yeah, yeah those are things just uh, more, more for the browser to tell what it is. Um, I thought I had a slide in here about metadata. Metadata is also one other thing that's um, kind of important. It, what it does is it sometimes it's, it allows you to 
basically specify some tags within your HTML document. So browsers like Google.com can pick up these tags and will know that what your website's about without having to parse through it. And a lot of times, um, you'll learn later that when you start going more into web development, that certain technologies sort of stop you from, from uh, being able to be parsed by Google search. And depending on what you're doing, that might be a bad thing because maybe you want to be really publicized and you want Google to be able to search through your website and show up better on uh, search results. So before you guys go on, we actually just uploaded the slides um, on the website. So if you want to follow along, they're there. Uh, the HTML documents or the HTML elements that John just presented are basically things that you're going to be copying and pasting a lot. The things that all your HTML documents need and things that you never really have to understand as a, as a web developer, you just kind of start all your HTML documents with that format. So but this stuff, the, the elements that he's about to go into are things that you are going to be using um, in, in, all your, in all your websites. Uh, yeah, so the first thing uh, that's pretty important in your HTML document is the head element. And um, that contains your metadata, title, and the content type. Um, so usually, I mean, this is kind of uh, self-explanatory. If you have if your documents are strictly a text thing, then you, know, you could text that HTML if it's completely a JPEG or whatever, or video, then you put JPEG. Uh, the next thing is body element. Um, this is, like I said, pretty much where all of your web content goes. Um, so things that you're going to be adding to these documents, aside from that, that uh, set uh, template, will be all uh, in addition to the body. Um, so I don't know if anyone gets that joke. <laughs> no? Yeah. Does anyone want me to explain it? All right. Um, <laughs> Okay, headings. So headings are just uh, these sort of tags that allow you to create text that's a different, differentiated from normal text in, in the way that uh, it's most of the times like larger, it differentiates in size and it, it differentiates in the boldness. Um, so there are actually six types of headings like H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, uh, and they don't contain attributes to them. So, um, like the attributes, like I said, were one of them was class, so it wouldn't have a class attribute. Um, so, is there a question? Oh yeah, oh. I was just wondering, like, why would you use this instead of like a tag that would be like, you know, font equals hold this equals like, size? Yeah. So you don't use um, any so. When he talked about the, the doc types, transitional and strict, the strict standard says that anything that has to do with display is no longer going to be part of the HTML standard because anything like saying the font size, saying the color of your font can be done via CSS. So the idea, and what we're going to get into later, is that CSS is where you're going to put all your code that manages how your content actually looks. And HTML is purely a markup language. So it basically says, you know, this line of text is a header or it's a paragraph. And it just kind of, it just clues into what the actual content is, but it's not actually going to style anything. Okay, I made one sentence long time yeah. ago, that's why. And, uh, okay. So is the CSS like make all the H1s the same font? Uh, you could, so with CSS you can do <laughs> And I don't want to get too into it because we will uh, get into it later. But CSS, yeah, can set all the H1s to look the same, or you can set a specific set of H1s to look a certain way if you set the class or the ID. But we'll get into that in about two lectures. So attributes are class. And we're going to get into so, that. So attributes are part of HTML elements, and there's like things like classes or class ID and among other things. And okay. you don't have to worry about that for now. We're going to 